Disclaimer, I was invited by the military history park Puka in Slovenia in 2017 and they kindly drove me around in their empty LBU and some other vehicles as well. Very important here, any errors in this video are my own. The museum or its staff was not involved in the creation of this video. If you want to know more about the museum, check them out on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube. Links are in the description. Now in this video, I will speak mostly about the smaller brother of the MTLBU, namely the MTLB. But as you can tell from the photos, there are quite some similarities. From the size, the MTLB is smaller and lower and it has 6 road wheels, whereas the MTLBU has 7 road wheels, as you can clearly see here. One major difference is that the MTLB has a turret with a machine gun, whereas the base version of the MTLBU is unarmed. On the screen, you can see a comparison of technical data of the two vehicles. So you might ask, why is the MTLB important? While the MTLB is quite omnipresent behind the battlefield, it is a multi-purpose vehicle that serves many roles in terms of support, maintenance and logistics. Additionally, it can also be used in combat if necessary. And if you look at the loss data provided by Oryx, we see that in the armored fighting vehicle category in the Russian losses during the Russian-Ukrainian war, so far the MTLB is in the first spot with 133 losses for all variants, including the MTLBU of a total of 278 armored fighting vehicles. Be aware that the armored fighting vehicles in this case doesn't include tanks and many other vehicles. So these vehicles account for 47.8%. Note these numbers are from 4th April 2022 at 1628 Central European Summertime. Additionally, these loss numbers are likely lower than the actual loss numbers, since Oryx counts vehicle losses via visual confirmation on social media, whereas losses mean destroyed, damaged, abandoned and captured. Interestingly enough, in terms of losses reported by Oryx, in comparison to tanks and infantry fighting vehicles, the MTLB suffered lower losses than tanks or infantry fighting vehicles. For instance, a total of 249 T-72 tanks were documented as losses and 130 BMP-2s. There are likely several reasons for this. The MTLB is a less complicated machine than these combat vehicles. The MTLB is not a combat vehicle, so technically it should see less combat. But with the current situation, hard to tell. Finally, it could be underreported since it looks rather boring, but this is hard to tell. In a few years, we should know more. If you look at another source about the total equipment of the Russian Federation, it is noted that the Russian Federation's army should have around 3,500 MTLB in active service in contrast to 2,900 main battle tanks of all types and 2,900 BMP-2s, which is the most numerous Russian infantry fighting vehicle. Be aware these numbers don't account for the vehicles in storage, which are far larger, for instance for the BMP-1. This clearly shows that the MTLB is of major importance, maybe not on the front line, but behind. When it comes to the total numbers built, the values differ widely. One source notes over 55,000, whereas other sources note over 12,000. The lowest number was over 9,000 built. At one point, a Ukrainian organization estimated that about 40 to 50,000 MTLB of various models served in 42 forces in the world, according to a document. From Tankolab. Since the production in the Soviet Union was not sufficient at one point and Poland also began to produce the MTLB, I suspect the higher number are closer to the reality here. Russian Wikipedia also notes more than 55,000. So what is the MTLB? Well, the full name gives a good general idea. It is called Mogoselovs, Tiagach, Likhki, Roni Rovani, which I'm sure I butchered terribly. Anyway, literally this means multi-purpose towing vehicle, light armored. So basically an armored prime mover or tractor. One typical role was towing anti-tank guns, artillery or mortars. While the weapon was towed outside, inside the gun crew could be transported and in some cases also additional ammunition. The capacity was two crewmen for operating the vehicle and an additional 11 men as passengers. The vehicle was versatile in many ways, it was amphibious and also had NBC protection as well. It is a simple and robust design, but also includes features like pneumatic systems and windshield washing. It could also serve as a simple cargo carrier, battle ambulance or even armored personal carrier. It has a dedicated medical ambulance variant as well. But why stop here? One can also make a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun out of the MTLB as you can see here, armed with its ZU. 23-2 on the roof. 
This would be operated by two crewmen. According to the last data by Oryx, the Russian lost four vehicles of this variant and the Ukrainians two so far. Although they probably did not serve in the anti-aircraft role. Then again, against helicopters it still should be reasonable effective. A short look at the development history. The Soviet Union was looking for a replacement of its prime movers. These were generally vehicles that could only tow artillery and in very few space. At first the MTL prime mover was designed. It was similar to the later MTLB but it was unarmored and since the B in the MTLB stands for armored it is kinda self explanatory if one speaks Russian, but I don't. According to Tankolad and Russian Wikipedia the development cycle was concluded in 1964 and that it was accepted into service in the Soviet army. I assume around at the same time mass production started, but tank encyclopedia notes it went into production in the early 1970s. Production was initially limited to Kharkov, now Kharkiv tractor plant, but due to the high demand in 1976 production was also started in Poland as well. At one point there was also production in Bulgaria according to Wikipedia. Similarly a German document on the former East German equipment where the country of origin for these MTLB is noted as Bulgaria. Of course it might have been a resale. A short look at the armament. The MTLB was equipped with a turret that had a single 7.62mm machine gun. The turret has a 360 degree traverse and the elevation ranges from minus 5 to plus 35 degrees. Generally suited to engage most soft ground targets, while the operator was fully protected from small arms fire. In terms of protection the main defense was the low silhouette, thus providing a smaller target and ideally not being seen, I assume John Cleese would approve. The armor itself consisted of welded 2P armor high grade hardness steel plates. The strongest plates had 40 mm which were the upper and lower glazes of the hull. The rest had 7 mm. The stronger parts should be protected against 50 cal armor piercing bullets from 500 meters or above. 7.62 armor piercing ammunition should not be able to penetrate the 40 mm. The 7 mm should provide protection against regular small arms fire and shrapnel, but not armor piercing ammunition. Of greater, import of greater importance for its mission is the mobility and load carrying capacity. The power to weight ratio is about 20.2 horsepower per metric ton. The maximum speed on the road is 61 km per hour or 38 miles per hour. Off road it is at 30 km per hour or 19 miles per hour. In water it reaches a whooping 6 km per hour or 3.7 miles per hour. Here it is propelled by its tracks. It does not have a dedicated propeller. The towing capacity is given with 6.5 metric tons while internally carrying up to 2 metric tons. Without towing anything this weight can be increased to 2.5 metric tons. So what about the MTLBU? Well this was a variant that was created to be a foundation for support vehicles, for instance artillery fire control, mobile headquarters etc. As you can see here there is a table in the crew compartment and in the military you generally only get a table if you really need one. As far as I remember from my 2017 trip this was a headquarters variant. The base variant was unarmed but there were some variants that were equipped with machine guns. As mentioned the MTLBU is larger and taller since it was intended for rear air units. Concealment was less of an issue. Additionally for its role more space was beneficial as well. In total it had an interior volume of 13 cubic meters. The internal carrying capacity was 4 metric tons, so enough for some stakes, a gaming PC and a few books from my library. To summarize, it is without question that the MTLB became less important in the last decades due to the major decrease of towed anti-tank guns and reduction of towed artillery. Yet since it is quite a versatile vehicle, it is still used in large numbers. This is both reflected by the total numbers in the Russian armed forces and also the lost numbers in the Russia-Ukrainian war. Big thank you here to Tankolad for providing the early draft for his MTLB article to me. Thank you to Vitaly for allowing me to use his photographs in this video. Be aware all errors are my own. No one else was involved in writing of this script. Thank you to the Military History Park Puka for inviting me in 2017. Special thanks to all my supporters for making trips to museums and military archives possible. As always source the list in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.